Okay, so Sturgis 2020, the 80th anniversary has come and gone. A bunch of us here from Law Abiding Biker Media went about 3,300 miles in nine days. Let me tell you that my schedule was extremely packed. And quite honestly, a lot of the trip is still much of a blur to me, but I'm gonna do my best to extract some of it from this brain and tell you about the overall experience. So uh, let's do this. Welcome back, Bikeaholics. Ryan Erlacher here, lawabidingbiker.com. I always thank you, that's right, you, for checking back in. So with COVID-19 keeping some bikers from attending the 80th anniversary, it clearly did not stop most. In fact, the South Dakota Department of Transportation did release attendance numbers based on traffic counts. It's gonna be a surprise to some who predicted headcounts of only 250,000. So from August 7th through the 16th, 2020, a total of 462,000 people attended the event uh, based on traffic counts from nine entry points. That's about 37,000 less than last year's headcount of 499,000 or a 7.5% decrease. So early reports from vendors show spending from attendees was up in 2020. However, those official reports aren't out yet. I can tell you that I personally talked to multiple vendors and they stated that spending was up from attendees. Um, in fact, they went on to say that it was looking much better than 2019. They were very pleased. And this is all great news for the economy of Sturgis and surrounding areas that heavily rely on income from the event each year. And it's reported that fewer attendees for 2020 were in the age groups of 60 to 70, which is the age group that has been most vulnerable to COVID-19. And I'm actually very curious on your thoughts and opinions on the event overall and whether you thought the numbers would be this close to last year's. Please comment below. This is a community and I definitely love hearing from you all. Okay, and for all of you that have asked or are wondering, yes, I filmed an entire documentary on this nine day trip and experience. I was lucky this year. I had a couple additional cameras, Lurch on One and Cowboy. Now this film's gonna go into edit late this fall and it is a massive large scale project. I really hope to have it out by the end of the year or early 2021 for the entire biker community. So there's no better time to hit that subscribe button and bell icon so that you're notified when we come out with new free videos on this channel. By the way, if you haven't checked out my other highly viewed motorcycle documentary films, make sure you do so. I will pop a card on the screen and I'll link to it in the description below. Kick back, enjoy them. Make sure you share them with all your biker friends. I do really appreciate it. Oh, and don't forget about our podcast. We're actually gonna do a two-part series on this trip. We're gonna tell a whole bunch of stories you won't hear anywhere else. We're gonna laugh a lot. We always have a lot of fun over there. So don't miss out. Make sure you subscribe to the Law Abiding Biker Podcast. We have 245 episodes out now. I'll pop a card on the screen and I will link to it in the description below for you. All right, so let me give you an overview of our trip and some of our experiences. You can really consider this a sneak peek of some of the things that may make it into my official documentary film. So we took three days getting to Sturgis, South Dakota from Washington State so we could chill and see some things. We rode the old Spiral Highway near Lewiston, Idaho. There's like 64 curves in seven miles and it's amazing. We then hit the beautiful Lolo Pass between Idaho and Montana and stayed the night in Missoula, Montana. Then we rode Bear Tooth Pass through Wyoming and Montana and it was as beautiful as the first time I wrote it back in 2015 at the 75th anniversary of Sturgis. We stayed the night in Billings, Montana. Luckily, the National Park Service is starting to open things up after shutting down for COVID-19. So the next day we were able to visit the famous Devil's Tower in Wyoming. And on our way to Sturgis, we also stopped in Deadwood City, South Dakota for a bit. And this is when it quickly became apparent to us that attendance numbers were not going to be down as the town was absolutely packed with bikers. It was also apparent that I was going to be meeting a ton of awesome bikers that would stop me in the street to say hi or to get a picture with me. We parted Deadwood City and arrived at a private residence in Rapid City, South Dakota, where we'd be staying for the next four days. Rapid City is about 30 minutes east of Sturgis. And of course, you better believe we spent some time in downtown Sturgis checking things out. While I was there, I got to meet so many of you that took the time to stop me and just say hi. I thank each of you for taking the time so I could personally meet you. Like always, there was all different kinds walking the streets of Sturgis and at the local establishments. We spent some time at Midget Wrestling and watched as the nights got a bit wild at some local establishments. Oh, and Squirt got spanked real good with a paddle by a bartender. We also visited the new Full Throttle Saloon 
since the old one I had previously visited five years ago burned down. And yes, we did what a lot of people that go to Sturgis do, and that is we spent majority of our time riding around the beautiful Black Hills area. If you haven't done so, you gotta do it. It really is good for the soul. So we rode the Badlands and while we were there, temperatures reached 108 degrees and it was just plain hot. Of course, if you're gonna ride the Badlands, you gotta stop by Wall, South Dakota. Very cool place if you get a chance. We finished up by riding to Mount Rushmore and Crazy Horse. And we had some awesome organized meet and greets. And so a couple of my beloved and longtime sponsors, Ciro 3D and Rick Rack, each carved out two hour blocks in their booths for the public meet and greets for me and the Law Abiding Biker crew. It was an absolutely humbling experience for me to have so many bikers from all over take the time to stop by and say hi to me and the crew and to get their pictures taken. The biker community is truly amazing, and I cherish the interaction I had with each and every one of you that stopped by. Meeting the Ciro 3D team and Rick Rack team in person and connecting with them on a personal level was an amazing experience. The persons behind both of these companies are amazing people and truly care about bikers, which is why I've aligned myself with them. They share my core values in serving the biker community. So support them and us. We carry their products right in the Law Abiding Biker store. And of course, we had our private patron member only ride and meet up event. We really like to treat our patron members well here at Law Abiding Biker Media. There's many benefits for becoming an exclusive member, to name a few. T-shirts, stickers, the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. You get access to podcasts early, access to live video broadcasts and chat, access to premium videos up on request, and you get access to these private ride and meetups, just like we hosted in Sturgis 2020. We had a large member turnout and I had planned a very special custom ride for the patron members through the Black Hills. At the end of the ride, we escorted the members to a park I had rented and we ate a fully catered barbecued meal. We got to hang out, visit, and connect on a personal level with these awesome bikers from all over. If you're interested in becoming an exclusive patron member and joining one of the largest online biker communities around, I'll pop a card on the screen and I'll put a link in the description below for more details. And during this long distance road trip, we did visit many restaurants and breweries along the way. Some good, some not so good, but nonetheless, each was an experience and has a unique story. And the last two days of this trip were spent bombing back home to Washington State. One 600 mile day, the second a 500 mile day. Oscar and Indian John decided to do an iron butt challenge and did it all in one day. And I will tell you that Oscar reports, although it was on his bucket list, probably won't be doing it again. So if you didn't know, I was also testing a whole bunch of progressive motorcycle riding gear during the trip that Revzilla sent me. I actually did a video on that gear prior to the trip uh, on the channel. I'll pop a card for you, link in the description below. To follow up on that, I'll be doing a separate video on each of those pieces of gear to release on this channel. Another great reason to be subscribed. So you know when I release them. Oh, and I almost forgot. Two brand new motorcycles were purchased during the trip by the Law Abiding Biker Crew, one being a Harley, the other an Indian. Okay, so that was just a small glimpse into our Sturgis trip. You better believe so much more happened. It will all be revealed when I release my official Sturgis documentary film. Stay tuned to the channel. Keep checking back. All right, your journey on this channel is not done. I'm gonna pop a couple cards. One will be a playlist for our awesome motorcycle documentary films, and I'll probably pop another that will be some sort of useful DIY video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Peace, I'm out.